Welcome all you guitar nerds out there. Today's video will give us a closer look inside this beautiful Supro amp. People know about this amp because the first two Led Zeppelin albums were recorded with one of these. And here it is, the original, a little bit customized and I think I would refuse to repair this. Our example is in much better shape, but does not function at all. Well, Supro amps were made by Valco in Chicago under different brand names. Here are a few. In 1968 they went out of business, but though these amps were quite cheap, they are totally underrated. They sound fantastic and they have a decent quality too. Let's start the first inspection. Here you can see that the output transformer is piggybacked on the speaker and the whole circuit is hand wired. No eyelet board, just a few terminal strips. Mm, really beautiful handcrafted circuit. Uh, the power switch seems to be a replacement and the power transformer as well uh, to work with 220 volts more voltage that we have here in Europe. But whoever did these replacements did a real good job. And here it is, the power transformer, a huge thing for this little amp. So we have to check the voltages later. The can capacitor is original, um, Mallory made in Chicago. So we have to replace this old guy too. Here we can determine how old this amp is and of course how old the capacitors are. The speaker code 285 tells us this is a roller speaker. 713 is the 13th week in 1957. But there's another good indicator for dating Valco amplifiers. All these units have these little plates with a serial number. The first letter in this case is an X and it stands for the decade of manufacturing. A V was stamped in the 40s, an X in the 50s, and a T or later a G was used in the 60s. The serial number on our example points to 1958. Okay, time to fix this precious little thing. It was actually pretty easy to find out why this M wasn't working when I checked the resistors. Uh, the cathode resistor was open and when I looked carefully I saw a little black spot, a burn mark on this uh, 330 ohm resistor. A quick fix, huh? Well, no. When I tried to remove the resistor the lug of the tube socket snapped off even before I touched it with my solder iron. So bad luck, we need a new tube socket. And the tone pod was acting quite funny when I turned it. So look at this, the shaft of the tone pod is loose. I removed one of the terminal strips to get access to the coupling caps and sure enough these old waxy sticky capacitors have seen better days. Time to say goodbye. And here you can see a drop of wax sticking on the outside of the chassis. Let's start giving this joker a whole lot of love. First step, removing the dropping resistors. I want to repurpose them because they tested absolutely fine. Of course, I leave the disconnected can capacitor in place just to keep the look of the amp original and the replacement capacitors will be mounted inside the chassis. I also 
changed the tone capacitors. These guys wear wax and paper too. And I changed two tone capacitors that were disc capacitors. Uh, because sometimes these old disc capacitors act like an antenna and bring in some noise into the amp. And I, I hate actually noisy amps. So all these old capacitors have to go. I added a virtual center tap, 200 ohm resistors to ground to suppress heater hum. All right, let's see what has been done so far. Here is one of the new filter caps and two new coupling caps. Uh, one of them hidden behind the terminal strip. The heater wire is now twisted. The new tube socket has a 5.6k grid stop resistor added. And here's the new cathode resistor with a lightly increased value from 330 to 390 ohms. And in the back you can see two more filter caps lurking. So I call the repair done. Let's check some voltages and see if the replacement transformer delivers the required 300 volts for these kind of amps. Oh, look! Spot on! 324 volts. That is pretty perfect. Alright, we have 300 volts on the second node. Perfect too. And on the third node we read 256 volts also pretty perfect I love that on the first triode of the preamp tube we have 155 volts which is perfect too and the second should read less and yes it is 91 volts Let's pay attention to the tubes. Look at this beautiful RCA Made 6v6. I assume this is still the original one, at least pretty old, but still healthy and working fine. The 5Y3 is testing perfectly fine too. And the preamp tube, a 12AX7. No shorts on both triodes, absolutely all right. Well, finally, let's do some readings and check the plate dissipation. Here we have the cathode resistor with 393 ohms, a voltage drop of 17 volts across the cathode resistor and the cathode, 307 volts across the cathode and the plate. The required maximum plate dissipation for a 66 tube is between 12 and 14 watts, so let's see where we are. We have 17 volts of voltage drop across the cathode resistor divided by 393 ohms of the cathode resistor and we end up with 0 0.043 amps 43 milliamps The voltage across the plate and cathode is 307 volts times 43 milliamps. And that's 13.2 watts of plate dissipation. Pretty darn perfect, isn't it? That's it. Our little Supro amp received a whole lot of love, so let's call Jimmy Page to play us some tunes. <laughs>
Jimmy, can you play some cleans for us? Thank mm -hmm. you. 